chapter 11, verses 1 through 14. Here we go. Then there was given me, the me there is John, a measuring rod like a staff. And someone said, Get up and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship in it. Leave out the court which is outside the temple and do not measure it, for it has been given to the nations and they will tread underfoot the holy city for 42 months. And I will grant authority to my two witnesses and they will prophesy for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, Fire flows out of their mouth and devours their enemies. So if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this way. These have the power to shut up the sky so that rain will not fall during the days of their prophesying. And they have power over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every plague as often as they desire. When they have finished their testimony... The beast that comes up out of the abyss will make war with them and overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which mystically is called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. Those from the peoples and tribes and tongues and nations will look at their dead bodies for three and a half days and will not permit their dead bodies to be laid in a tomb. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and celebrate. And they will send gifts to one another because of these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. But after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God came into them and they stood on their feet and great fear fell upon those who were watching them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. Then they went up into heaven in the cloud and their enemies watched them. And in that hour there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake, and the rest were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe is coming quickly. The action has moved to Jerusalem. We have several markers in here to show us that we are in Jerusalem for, for this portion of this chapter. Uh, the temple of God. John is given a measuring reed to measure the temple of God. This is an interesting thing. People ask the question, is this the temple of God that's in heaven? What we've been seeing this whole time? Or is this the temple of God on earth? Well, the Bible seems to be extremely clear in Daniel chapter 9 and in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, also in the book of Revelation and in other places, that the temple will be rebuilt. The temple's going to be rebuilt. And the fact that he's measuring it makes it sound like it's something that can be measured. He's using a measurement, measurement of a man, of mankind. And the, the fact that the outer court is going to be handed over to the nations for them to trample upon it in the holy city. That would be pretty fascinating to think about it if this is the temple in heaven. So you mean to tell me the nations are going to trample the outer court of the temple in heaven for 42 months? No. The action has moved to Jerusalem. This is the temple of God in Jerusalem. This is also the temple, and we're not there yet in this text. This is also the temple where the Antichrist is going to sit and declare himself to be God. Okay? And here's an interesting thing. One of my professors at seminary had said regarding this temple, because there are many Christians who give money to the, the Temple Institute in order to build the temple. He said, you are giving money to help build the temple of the Antichrist. This is where the Antichrist will sit. And I, I, he was really passionate about it. And I said, my goodness, he's right. Why would I give money to this temple that is the Antichrist temple? But then it was the earliest church fathers. It was Irenaeus and others like him that wrote. Because they were also frustrated about that same problem. But they said, look at what scripture said. They used an observation. They observed what scripture said and they said it's called the temple of God. Not the temple of the Antichrist. 
And they said also that they believed that this temple would exist into the millennial reign of Christ, the same one. So I say to you, uh, if you're giving to that temple, you need to be very careful because there's plenty of organizations out there that love to prey on Christians who are happy to give money to a temple, the temple. Okay, it uh, doesn't mean that your money is going to go to help. Well, I, I, in the millennial reign of Christ, you'll say, hey, I, I help pay for that candlestick. It is going to happen. It's, it's, yeah. You're just helping fulfill the, 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 the base of it. You're just helping to fulfill prophecy. That's right. And if you give today, you will speed it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Because yeah. God is running out of time. No. <laughs> but it is fascinating that th that is going on in our lifetime. Uh, whether it comes to anything, who knows. And whether your money goes to fill somebody's pocket who is working as an administrator, who knows. Uh, I will fall back on this. Be a good steward with God's resources that he gave you. The Bible does call this the temple of God. It calls it the temple of God here. It calls it the temple of God in 2 Thessalonians 2. It calls it the temple of God in uh, Daniel 9.27. Uh, so there we have it. It's the temple of God in Jerusalem. But it said that the outer court is going to be given to the nations and it will be the holy city is going to be trampled for 42 months. 12 plus 12, 24, 36 plus 6, 42. Three and a half years. Remember I told you there's a timetable that we were given in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 9. We have a video on YouTube, the 2GAB video, Daniel chapter 9, part 2, goes over all of this type of information. The redemption, the final redemption of Israel is accomplished after 77 year periods. The final seven year period is thrown out into the future. The earliest church fathers believed that. I believe it. And I think that scripture is very clear about that. So here we have a three and a half year period that's been mentioned. These 42 months. Because Daniel 9.27 splits the last seven year period into two equal uh, groups of three and a half year period. Two equal periods. And so here we have 42 months where the city is going to be trampled. We also have these two witnesses. These two witnesses are going to prophesy for 1,260 days. Somebody do the math. Is that three and a half years? How would you do the math? Well, it's, it's math class. How would you do the math? First Tamla. Divide, mm -hmm. divide that by 365. Yeah, divide 1260 by 365. Somebody do it on your phone and tell me what the answer is. 30 days. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. What, did you, what was that, Sandra? <laughs> God's calendar is 30 days, not... Oh! She said God's calendar is 30 days. A 30-day month. Well, how dare you? How dare you? And uh, it, it, a 30-day month is how many days for a year? It's 30,000 years? It's 360. You should divide 1260 by 360 and see if you get 3.5. You will, because God's calendar is not our calendar, nor is God's year our year, nor is God's day our day. Take today, for example. It's what? <coughs> Sunday? Morning. Morning. And what tonight will be? Sunday, Sunday night, huh? Monday. Sandra, do you have a Monday, Monday night? <laughs> It'll be Monday night because the day is counted from the evening to the morning. So when the sun sets is when the day begins. But that's not the way we count it. And I'm not trying to advocate for saying, well, you know, you need to, be, you need to tell people tonight it's Monday night. And if you say it's Sunday night, then you're a sinner and you're living on man's time. I'm living on God's time. Uh, but this is at least, don't do that. Don't, we, we're in America, let's not be weird and say, I'll see you Sunday night, and then Saturday night you're like, you never showed up. You know, don't, don't do that. Uh, so we see that it is based on a 30-day month and a 360-day calendar. These guys are going to have their ministry for three and a half years. 
uh, Jerusalem is going to be trampled for three and a half years. The 42 months and the 1260 days are equal. Okay? They're not happening at the same time. I, I will argue that they're consecutive, but we'll deal with that later. These witnesses are wearing sackcloth. Now, I've been putting out notes. They're on the Facebook page. You can look at the notes. I have all sorts of references to sackcloth. Sackcloth is the clothing of repentance. Sackcloth is the clothing of sorrow and mourning. These guys are mournful and sorrowful and repenting for the sins of God's people. Their ministry is in Jerusalem. They're killed on the streets of Jerusalem where they are left. Their dead bodies are left. They are uh, Israel. They are the olive trees, the two olive trees and two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. Who is the Lord of the earth? God. This is a, a, a corresponds with Zechariah 4. In Zechariah 4, in fact, this chapter, this, these 14 verses correspond with Zechariah period, the book of Zechariah. Because the book of Zechariah was about rebuilding the temple. And here the temple's rebuilt. The two olive trees in Zechariah 4 were these two guys, Zerubbabel and Joshua. Of course, Joshua in the Greek is Jesus. That's right. So uh, Zerubbabel was the political leader of the Jews, and Joshua was the high priest. And so they were there. Their ministry was to rebuild the temple of God. Here the temple of God is built, but we have these two olive trees, and there are also two lampstands before God. And people wonder, who are these guys? What's their identity? Well, who do you think they are? Really, the, these are the only Christians on earth that don't have an opinion about the two witnesses. What are they talking about Ezekiel and Elijah? Mm -hmm. uh, Elijah and Homeboy. Uh, no, Enoch. <laughs> Enoch. Okay, Enoch. All right, why would it be Elijah and Enoch? They didn't die. It's subject to man to die once. Is, yes, Hebrews 9.27. It's appointed for man to die once, and after this comes judgment. Those guys didn't die. Yes, yeah, some people say Moses, and the reason they say Moses is because of, if you look at these plagues, the water's turned to blood. Well, only Moses can turn water into blood. <laughs> right? And fire comes out. Well, Elijah called down fire. So only Elijah can call down fire. One thing they say it because of the transfiguration when Jesus went on top of the... Yeah, the... And they, and they said it was Moses and... Elijah, yeah. I think they try to use that for the same. The Mount of Thank you. That's a great point. The Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, so, but we do know that Moses died. We do know that it's very odd that Enoch never died, and Elijah never died. Elijah goes up in the whirlwind. There's that chariot of fire that separates he and Elisha, and he goes up in in the whirlwind to heaven. And Enoch was he walked with God, and God took him away. He was no more. Enoch never died. So here we see, uh, it's, it's likely because of that that they never died, but there's these other questions. Here's another piece of information I will submit to you. Irenaeus, who was the disciple of Polycarp, who was the disciple of John, Irenaeus says that it's Enoch and Elijah. Tertullian says it's Enoch and Elijah. Hippolytus says it's Enoch and Elijah. Okay? Uh, so, I think it's highly likely, but it's fine if it's not. It's, it's like, I mean, if, if you wind up being there and you're seeing it, <laughs> well, I thought you were going to be Enoch. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate the work you're doing, Moses, but <laughs> kind of disappointed. Uh, now, why, why else might it be Enoch and Elijah? Another reason might be this. Enoch represents the pre-flood world. Yeah, and Gentile. I like that too. Enoch is the pre-flood world. Elijah is the post-flood world. And we have the testimony of Christ right here in God's Word. So it, I think it's fascinating from that perspective. But who knows? They die. They are given authority for three and a half years and that's it. After that, the beast that comes out of the abyss kills them. And their bodies lie there for three and a half days. 
three and a half years, three and a half days. It's fascinating. And, and notice that the people are giving gifts to one another. And in all seriousness, this was in a Christmas uh, greeting card. Verse 10. And this is how it was worded. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and celebrate. And they will send gifts to one another. And that's where it ends. And, that's what, and so people get this greeting card and they say, Oh, look, the Bible says here at Christmas time you should rejoice and give gifts to one another and celebrate on the earth. No, you need to read your Bible in context. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And if you see that in the store, please. Burn it. <laughs> yeah. Just burn it. Yeah. Just burn it. Just right there. Yeah, no biggie. <laughs> no biggie. But these, these guys come back to life. The beast that comes out of the abyss defeats them. And that is the Antichrist. We're not going to get there yet. Isn't it interesting that he mentions the, the beast that comes out of the abyss, and this is the first time he mentions it, but he's not going to explain it till later. This is why you have to carefully study the book of Revelation. But these guys are resurrected. So were they really defeated? No. <laughs> you can... Do not fear those who can only harm the body. Do not fear those who can be encouraged by that. These guys were res they laid there dead for three and a half days. And all of a sudden, they're up. And what happens? Uh, the earthquake happens. But Jerusalem here is called, mystically, called Sodom and Egypt. Well, the Greek word there is really spiritually. So spiritually, Israel is going to, or Jerusalem is going to be Sodom and Egypt which Sodom and Egypt represent uh, enmity with God. Okay? Uh, polytheism, sexual immorality, great sin. That's God's holy city of Jerusalem. That is where they are headed today. Just because they have the temple of God does not mean that they are acting like God's people. So we're going to learn more about the beast out of the abyss here shortly in a few chapters. But this great earthquake happens, and this is fascinating. The earthquake happens, a tenth of the city falls, 7,000 people die. Again, the action is in Jerusalem. And those that survive give glory to God. Why is God patient and waiting? Because not everybody that believes has come in yet. Zechariah is very clear. A lot of Jews are going to die. A lot of Israelites are going to die. But a lot of them are going to come to know the Lord. And all of those that survive this tribulation period are going to be saved because they're going to look on He whom they pierced. They will know the Messiah. Uh, the second woe has passed. Why is it thrown in here? Is the seventh trumpet really a seven-year period? Or the sixth trumpet? Is the sixth trumpet a seven-year period? Or is this a parenthesis? I submit to you that the four angels that were loose from the Euphrates, who led the 200 million army that killed a third of mankind, is the second woe. He's transitioning back now. The second woe is mentioned. We're going to get we're going to get right where we were, right where we left off. We're going to get the seventh trumpet. Revelations are very difficult because of this move forward. Wait, let's go back and fill in some gaps. And this is why I'm telling you. I'm waiting until we're done with this before I present you with a timeline where everything fits. I'm not going to do it ahead of time. I don't want to put filters on your eyes so that you see what I want you to see. I want God's Word to speak out to you. Let God's Word speak out to you. If you disagree with something here, by golly, come up and tell me. I'm not going to bite. I'm not Dylan, no. <laughs> Dylan would never bite. Did, did Dylan ever bite anybody? Well, they probably quit coming if he did. They left. The, those that left are those who, who were bitten. All right, any questions? All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this time that we had to look at your word. Lord, please continue to be with everybody here. Lord, if you have moved them to anything, Lord, there's a wonderful application here about eating your word and digesting it and taking the, the proper time that your word requires. 
Lord, we want to know you more, and to know you more, we have to get in your word more. And not only that, we have to do what you've told us to do. So please help all of us to be faithful with the giftings that you've given us, to do the thing that you've called us individually to do. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.